so now what I'm going to do is I will install the chain. I put already the crank gear, now I'm going to put the cam gear. It doesn't really matter which side for now, maybe later we're going to have to adjust it, but for now I'm going to put any side because there are no marks on these because the way they make them now, nowadays, uh, this gear, for example, is going to fit some other car too, but if it had mark for a Spitfire, this mark wouldn't match the other car, I don't know which one, but uh, maybe some other car. So the only difference between the gear for the Spitfire and the gear for another car and the gear for a third car is where the, the mark is positioned. So what they do is they don't put marks anymore and this way they can sell this gear for three different cars. But that gives us a little bit of more uh, trouble when we have to install it on the engine. But that's, uh, that's fine with us because we know how to uh, degree the camshaft anyways, right? Okay, so I'm not going to put the bolts yet because I don't want to turn the, crankshaft, the camshaft yet. I, I just need to, to be able to turn the crankshaft only. So this is positioned now. And I want to turn manually the crankshaft into a position of a top dead center of the first cylinder which is also the same as here as the fourth cylinder right they are at the top dead center at the same time okay before we start though i'm gonna explain a little bit what we're gonna do and then you're gonna be able to follow when we are doing it here The spec for our camshaft, according to the manual, is uh, showing, it, it's showing us that the intake valve of the first cylinder starts to open 25 degrees before top dead center. This means that, I put this uh, pointer here, so this means that when the crankshaft is in this position, the intake valve is going to start to open and as we are turning the crankshaft this way now I'm turning only the wheel but supposedly the wheel needs to be attached to the crankshaft and when we turn the crankshaft together with the degree wheel when the intake valve starts to open here it's going to keep opening going this way it's going to keep opening somewhere here it's going to be fully open and then it's going to start to close and 65 degrees before, uh, after bottom dead center, it is gonna be fully closed somewhere here. So it starts to open 25 degrees before top dead center, and it closes 65 after bottom dead center. And then from here after, it's gonna stay closed until it, the crankshaft makes one more full turn. So at this top dead center, it's still going to be closed. Uh, it's going to remain closed here. And when it reaches again 25 degrees before top dead center, right here, it's going to start to open again. And again, it's going to do the same uh, cycle. It's going to start to open. Here it's going to be fully open. And here it's going to start to close. And here it's going to be fully closed. And so on and so forth. The same way the exhaust valve is starting to open 65 degrees before bottom dead center, right here. So it starts to open here, it keeps going, it keeps opening, keeps opening, somewhere here it's going to be fully open, and then when it reaches top dead center and 25 degrees past top dead center, right here, it's going to be fully closed. At this time, because we know the intake starts to open here, right, 25 before top dead center, and the exhaust closes 25 after top dead center. This means that from here to here, our boat valves will be a little bit open, not fully open, but a little bit open, because the intake is starting to open here, and it starts to open, and it, it keeps opening, keeps opening, keeps opening, and the exhaust is open here somewhere here it's fully open and then as we come here it, it still closes but it's still not closed it's still not completely closed when the intake is starts to open 
so it keeps closing and it closes here but this distance between 25 before top dead center and 25 after top dead center is called overlap this overlap is when the two valves are a little bit open both of them and because it is 25 before and 25 after this means that at zero the two valves must have the exact same opening they would be exactly equally open at top dead center so we are looking for this position of the camshaft in which the two valves are equally open and that's the some people call that top dead center of the camshaft and then we have to find the top dead center of the crankshaft but the true top dead center not the approximate top dead center where we stand right now we need to find the true top dead center and then match the true top dead center of the crankshaft with the top dead center of the camshaft by attaching the chain and fixing them in this position then they are synchronized and when we spin the crankshaft the camshaft is going to spin too and it's going to start and it's going to open the valves in the exact uh, time when we want them to open and it will close them at the exact time when we want them to be closed so first we're going to have to find the top dead center of the crank how do we find that with our piston stop this is what i said earlier uh, this bolt here is acting as a piston stop so now we know that we are more or less there right now pretty much there because we see the fourth piston is all the way to the top but as we know the top dead center of the piston lasts for two three four i don't know how many but a couple of degrees so we need to find the exact one uh, i'm gonna turn the crank in any direction like 10 15 degrees so it is a little bit lower than the top dead center and then i'm gonna tighten this bolt until I reach the piston when I feel pressure this means that like right here I can't tighten the bolt anymore this means that I hit the piston so now I can't turn the crank in this direction anymore I'm not pushing too hard I'm just trying because I'm gonna break the piston but the, now the piston is blocked by the bolt it can't go anymore in this direction I'm gonna take a note of this position here it shows me exactly 14 let me bring it closer for now it doesn't really matter oh I need to <laughs> you see I need to fasten that it doesn't really matter where I fasten it I'm gonna fasten it at 14 and where it was or okay it went to okay that's okay that's 16 degrees so we know that in this direction our piston is stopped by the piston stop at what did we say 16 degrees so now we're gonna go in the other direction and we will see if it is gonna stop at 16 degrees too 16 degrees before top dead center no, it stopped at 14 before top dead center. So we need to equalize these two uh, measurements. To equalize them, what do we have to do? We have to move the degree wheel by one degree. So it shows 15 here instead of 14. And on the other side, side instead of 16, it's going to show 15, right? So it's going to be equal. Now I'm going to move this somewhere else because I'm going to hit the same hole probably and it's going to... Okay, that's 15. And let's see now if when we go in the other way, in the other direction, it's going to stop at 15 again. bang on so now we know that right between the two 15s in the middle which is zero is our top dead center so now we can remove this bolt 
or just loosen it so it doesn't stop the piston anymore. And now when we come to zero, right here, we are 100% sure that our piston is at top dead center. That's the true top dead center. Okay, so first step is done. Now we need to do the second step. We need to find the top dead center of the camshaft. So we need to find the position of the camshaft in which the two valves are overlapped. They are a little bit open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one bolt here on the camshaft so I can start turning it. So now when I turn the, ch the crankshaft through the chain I'm going to start turning the uh, camshaft too. And I'm going to put my fingers on top of the, the two push rods and I'm going to start turning to see. Now I see my exhaust starts to open. So I know that a little bit before it closes again is going to be my overlap time. Yeah, and now I feel with my other finger, I feel that the intake starts to open too. So I'm going to bring it somewhere here is my top dead center of the camshaft. I know that I am in the overlap area. Somewhere within it, I don't know where exactly, but we're going to find that. So now, I'm going to remove the bolt. I know that the, crankshaft, the camshaft is already in more or less where we want it to be. So I'm going to remove this bolt. And I'm going to turn the crankshaft without turning the camshaft now because I removed the bolt so it's going to stay where it is. And I'm going to put the crank in top dead center, more or less. And now I'm going to turn the wheel by one or two teeth so I can put my bolt there. Actually more than that. Okay. So now I can put the bolt. I'm going to put the two of them You know what, I'm going to double check the, the top dead center again because I think I touched a little bit the pointer So I'm going to do it again Okay, this time it stops at 21. And that's 21 too. Okay, so it is okay. And now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna install my I'm gonna install my dial gauge here and we're gonna see how much are both of the valves open at top that center of the crankshaft. So now I'm gonna bring you closer so you can see both. Okay, so we know I just put the dial gauge in. So we know that here at top dead center our intake valve just started to open. Which means that if I go backwards with the crankshaft it's going to close again. I just need to turn a couple of degrees and it's going to close again. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn back until this arrow stops moving. This means that my intake is fully closed and I'm going to zero it there. Okay, so now, no matter how much, not too much, of course, so if I keep going, my uh, intake is going to stay closed.
So I'm going to zero it here, which is by fluke almost zero. And I'm going to start turning clockwise now, the normal direction of the crankshaft. And I will see when I reach top dead center how much it is going to be open. Okay, it started to open now. And at top dead center right now, it is open 21 thousandths of an inch. 21 thousand. 21 and a half, right? 21 and a half top. Okay, in the same manner, we're gonna check now how much is the exhaust open at top dead center. This washer is on my way a little bit, but it's fine. Okay, so now that exhaust, we know that the exhaust at top dead center is almost closed, but not completely. So if we go clockwise, it will close completely and it's going to stop. Okay, it stopped. So this is where it is fully closed. I keep going but it doesn't move anymore, which means it's fully closed. So I'm going to zero it here now. And if I go backwards, it's going to start to open again, right? And I will see how much it is open at top dead center. Okay, it started to open already and at top dead center, but I'm not going to stop here. I'm going to go a little bit past top dead center and I'm going to approach it in the clockwise direction because there is a slack on the chain and I don't want this slack to affect my numbers. So I'm going to approach the top dead center clockwise, which is the normal rotation, direction of rotation. So this is my top dead center and this shows me that the exhaust is open 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 60, 67 tau. So my intake is open at top dead center 20, 21 and a half tau. This one is open 67 tau. So what does this mean is that we, we add 67 to 21 and a half, that's 80, uh, 67, 88 and a half, and divide that by 2, that's 44 and a quarter. So their equally open position will be 44. So I'm going to adjust this to 44. Which is right there. So this means that Probably at this position the intake is open 44 too, but we will double check that. So now I'm going to remove the two bolts and without turning the camshaft, I'm going to keep it at 44 there. Now I'm going to turn the crank to zero. This doesn't move now because we removed the bolts. And now I have to put the bolts again. But, actually I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna come clockwise. And now I have to put the bolts again, but of course I'm not going to be able to do that. So, yeah. So what I'm going to do, this is still at 44. I'm going to pull out the gear and I'm going to turn it like that. This gives me uh, just a little bit adjustment. If you want to know why, follow the link and there I have a good explanation of that. Let's see now. No. Okay, so I'm going to turn it by 90 degree. One more 
tudo. And I think we are there. Yes. You know what? I'm gonna put also the I'm gonna put the tab washer as well so when everything is fastened I don't need to remove it anymore to fasten it again. Okay, I turned it with my gun. Okay, now the slug is removed and I am at 44. Okay, so I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna go until it's fully closed, which is here. And this is zero, right? So now I'm gonna go to the top dead center, I'm gonna go past the top dead center and I'm gonna approach it in the clockwise direction. is right there and I am at 44 and a half 44 and a half is how much the exhaust valve is open at top dead center 44 and a half so now let's see how did this affect the intake we hope that it is 44 and a half too right Okay, so now we have to go in the, we have to go back and notice when this stops. Okay, it stopped now. So we're gonna zero it here. We know that now the valve is fully closed and we're gonna go clockwise and we will see what is it gonna show me at top dead center. which is here shows me 40 did it show me 40 or 45 before on the exhaust? huh 40 what was the exhaust? I, I got confused let me see the exhaust again so 40 on the intake and the exhaust again this is where it is closed zero now we're gonna go past top dead center and we're gonna approach it in the clockwise direction. Okay, that's 45 and a half, so not 44 and a half, 45 and a half. Okay, and the intake is 40, so the center point between them is 43. So if we bring it to 43. Right there, my crank shows one degree, so I think we can't be closer than that. So this is, I believe, our uh, correct position of the cam. But now we can do something else. Okay. So now. Actually, I'm going to leave it out. The, now we're going to talk about the peak of the lobe of the intake valve of the first cylinder. What do I mean? This is the position where the intake valve is fully open, where the lobe of the camshaft is, is pushing the push rod in the highest position possible. This peak of, of the lobe is in the middle of the duration of the valve. So if we know that the intake valve starts to open here, 
25 degrees before top dead center and it closes here at 65 after bottom dead center this means that the center point between this and this somewhere here is our peak of the lobe so we can calculate that mathematically so how do we do that? I'm going to turn it a little bit so you can see everything so all together the whole duration of the intake is 25 before top dead center plus 180 which is from the top dead center to the bo bottom dead center plus 65 which is after bottom dead center right this is our total duration so 25 plus 180 is 205 plus 65 is 270 degrees this is our total duration so in the middle of this 270 degrees which is 150, uh, 135 degrees uh, is our peak our center of the lobe this is when our intake valve should be fully open and it is at its peak so 135 degrees after it started to open which is not 135 after top dead center it's 135 after the starting point which is 25 degrees before top dead center so 135 minus 25 is 110 110 degrees after top dead center is our center of the lobe so right here this is 90, 100, 110 right here our intake valve should be at its peak so I'm gonna put the the dial gauge on the on the intake valve and now I'm gonna go back and I will see I'm gonna look at that gauge and we'll see okay now actually it is the other top dead center right here so now we know that the valve keeps opening goes up it keeps going up and here somewhere it's gonna stop and it's gonna start going down you see here start going down so this is our fully open position of the valve So somewhere here is our peak of the lobe, but we don't know exactly. It's exactly like the top dead center. It lasts for a couple of degrees on the crankshaft, and we need to find the true peak of the lobe. So how do we find that? Well, we're going to find the position in which the valve is open the most. And we're going to zero the gauge there. So here it is open the most. From here it only goes down. No matter which direction we turn the crank, it goes only down. Right? If I turn this way, it goes down. If I turn the other way, again it reaches zero and it goes down. Actually. Yeah. So, from this position, I'm going to go down 50 thousandths when, while I'm turning the, the camshaft in the counterclockwise direction. But I'm going to go past it and I'm going to approach it in clockwise direction. Okay, which is right here. So now I'm going to see I am at 60 degrees after top dead center. Okay, 60 degrees after top dead center. And we will see now it goes fully open and now I'm going to keep turning until it goes again 50 thousandths in the other direction, which is right here. So the other one was at 60 here we are at uh, 
now I'm going to keep counting them this way. So that's 90, 100, 110, 120, 30, 40, 50, 60, 63. So 163. So our center, our peak of the lobe is between these two points, the 60 and 163. The center point between these two is, if we add them together and divide by 2, it, that's going to be our center point. So we add 60 to 163, that's 223, divided by 2, that's 111 and a half, right? 111 and a half is our peak of the lobe, right here. I'm going to approach it in the clockwise direction, right here. This is our true peak of the lot. We are looking for 110 and uh, I believe that we can get closer than that. 111 and a half is as close as we can be, I believe. So my camshaft is, uh, is degreed. Now I'm going to tighten these bolts much better.